Ken Trahan along with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. A win is a win regardless of how you get it, and the Saints found a way to win a game. Number nine was an imposter for much of the game, but he showed up as number nine and the guy we know when it mattered most. Absolutely. These are the kind of games for so many years we used to see the Saints lose. You know, grasping, you know, victory from the jaws of defeat, as the old saying goes. And, you know, it, it's nice to see one of those on, on, on the good guy side, so to speak. But uh, you're right. It was, a, it was an offensive performance that was, you know, suspect at best for 59 minutes. But when it mattered, uh, you know, given one last chance, Drew Brees took the offense right down the field to get in a field goal range. You know, great pass down the seam to Marcus Colston to to set up the game winning field goal from Garrett Hartley and come out of there two and zero uh, and you know one on one on top in front of Atlanta two on the rest of the division right now just two weeks into the league. Good teams find a way to win. Bad teams find a way to lose. Tampa Bay's a bad, undisciplined football team, not particularly well coached. And the Saints are they a good football team? I guess we're fixing to find out. They're. Maybe a little better than average, as we thought they would be, but still there's lots of room for improvement. You know there is, obviously, and I think these next four weeks leading into the bye are going to tell you a lot. Arizona comes to town this week 1-1, one one, but they're probably better than that. And then the next three teams are three of the other seven unbeaten teams in the NFL, starting with Miami and then Chicago and New England are all 2-0. and oh. So you're going to find out a lot about the Saints over the course of the next four weeks. No question. What we have discovered is their defense is playing significantly better, tied for fifth and the fewest points allowed in the league through two weeks, not counting the Monday night game. And this is a defense that's just getting it done, despite the fact that it's chopped up injury-wise, even more impressive from what Rob Ryan's group has done. Yeah, and it's only getting worse. You know, Tom Johnson left the game yesterday. Patrick Robinson, that was not a good-looking injury at all. Would not be surprised to, to hear this week that he might be done for a significant amount of time. So, um, you know, you just, you just keep lining guys up. Like Kenny Vaccaro was playing cornerback in the fourth quarter he, yesterday. He and Jenkins both were playing wide receivers in the second half of this yeah. game, which is remarkable. Yeah, and I guess, we've you know, Roman Harper is sliding down and having to play linebacker at times. You know, the, the – Defense. A lot of times we do assign positions to guys and think they can only play one thing. But in the multiplicity of schemes, obviously guys do play a lot of different positions. What the injuries do is it limits Rob Ryan's ability to substitute to to use some of that flexibility out there. But you know, obviously they signed re-signed Jay Richardson before the Tampa game. You would expect if there's another opportunity, they will do something similar going into this week. The LSU Tigers move up to number six in the latest Associated Press poll. National polls have them rising after they whipped Kent State and looked good throwing the ball again. And I know this was a lesser opponent, not a terrible team, but a lesser opponent. But still, they did what they were supposed to do, and you have to be very encouraged about the continued productivity of this passing attack. And and the running game, the, run, the rush for 300, they passed for 250. I believe it's the first time in school history that they've started with three straight 250-yard passing games. And uh, but you know Jeremy Hill, Terrence McGee, both over 100 yards rushing. You know, a well balanced attack, and I guess you could say the preseason is now over because Auburn comes to town on Saturday. SEC play starts. It just like it's going to be uh, significantly tougher for the Saints the next few weeks. It will be that way for the Tigers as well. And McGee surely looks like their second best back, and I-, I knew he'd be a good player. He just needed the opportunity, and he's getting it now and doing a good job. Obviously, uh, their defense played good enough. We'll see how good they are uh, facing Gus Malzahn's offense of Auburn this coming week, which will be a real test. Auburn, not very good defensively, but they can score points offensively. LSU will have to play well. Yeah, absolutely. This is a this is a much more difficult test than you know. Arguably, the TCU game would probably be on on a similar level to this. Although TCU now one and two, we don't know really what what they're all about. But you know, certainly it is a lot tougher than what they saw the last two weeks. Tulane, of course, on Thursday night beat Louisiana Tech, overcame four turnovers, and played really well on defense. And they got an efficient performance from Nick Montana, and they got their first road win after 15 straight losses, and they won their first conference game. So this was significant in many ways. Yeah, they get to they basically that the loss the previous Saturday to South Alabama you just made up for. Oh, by the way, South Alabama turned around and beat a pretty decent Western Kentucky team last Saturday. So maybe that wasn't as bad as we first thought, but. Yeah, you're you're back to holding serve, so to speak. Tulane's got six at home, six on the road. You'd like to think, 
you know, six and six is a possibility. I think it's a lot more of a possibility after that win on Thursday night. And it was a big week in prep football with some huge monster games locally. Carr rallied to beat St. Augustine. John Curtis lost a game. That seldom happens, but the team that beat them was terrific. St. Thomas Aquinas, and of course, got prep football returning to WHNO. Yeah, this uh, this Saturday, we'll have uh, the latest edition of the first NBC Bank prep showcase. The aforementioned John Curtis Patriots on a rare losing streak. Uh, heading uh, down to the River Parishes to take on East St. John. You can watch it live Friday night on sportsnola.com uh, on WHNO Saturday at noon. Don't forget the Greater New Orleans Quarterback Club at noon Monday at the Cannery, 3803 Toulouse Street, Saints, LSU, Tulane, and prep speakers every week. Ricky Jackson, our own Ricky Jackson, speaking today. Sports Noah TV, 6 p.m. Monday nights here on WHNO Channel 20. And, of course, Prep Recruiting Insider coming up as well and feature teams every week as well as the John Forcade Show with Mike Dettelier. So keep it tuned to Channel 20. Yeah, Tuesday night, PRI this week. Edna Carr coming off that big win. You'll hear from from Speedy Knoll and some of their other great prospects. Uh, Always some great insight there. Look forward to it. It's part of our sports block on WHNO Channel 20. And we hope that you'll watch. Lenny, as always, thanks. Have a great week. You too. See you later this week. That's our first NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. For Lenny, I'm Kenny. Have a great week and God bless you.